In the past few videos, we have been talking about various interpolation methods. We covered methods such as Lagrange interpolation and Newton's divided difference interpolation. Also recall that we learn about these interpolation methods as we want the ability to construct smooth, continuous functions such that we can find the outputs of the systems wherever we wish, regardless of the information given to us. Now, let's talk about a new interpolation method called spline interpolation. If you recall, in the past interpolation methods, we constructed a polynomial from all of our discrete data points that we were given, and we made what is called a global polynomial interpolating function. By global, I mean that we used all of our data set, and not simply a section of it, to develop the interpolating polynomial. Therefore, as I've previously mentioned, it doesn't matter if we use Lagrange interpolation or Newton's divided difference interpolation. Both methods will result in the same global interpolating polynomial as they take in and output the same result. Although great in some scenarios, sometimes using a global interpolating method is impractical or less efficient than simply taking a local interpolation. Why though? Well, as we add more data points to a global interpolating polynomial, we need to increase the polynomial order, which in certain applications can give wildly inaccurate answers, like this graph here for example. Therefore, it is going to be beneficial to us that we now have a local interpolation method. So, let's talk more about what local interpolation is and what that means. A local interpolation method means that we are only going to be interpolating between a subsection of data inputs rather than the whole of the data set. Which basically means that instead of having one very high order polynomial that fits through all of our data set, we're going to have several much lower order polynomials to fit a continuous function through interpolation. Let's now talk about what spline interpolation is and how it works. In the coming videos, we will get more into using and solving problems with various degrees of spline interpolation, but for now, let's talk about the various types of spline interpolation that we can have, and what they look like to give you a broad idea before getting into the details and examples about those methods. In this course, I will be covering first and second order splines, but just note that there are higher order splines that will just not be covered in this course. Firstly, the simplest spline that we can have is one in which all our data points connect by straight lines to their neighbors. This is called a first order spline, or also known as a linear spline interpolation, as all of our splines are, well, linear. Obviously, this is not quite smooth as we have these sharp ish corners at our nodes. Therefore, more commonly, we use what are called cubic splines, or second order splines, as they allow for both smooth and continuous functions that could look many different ways, such as the following. Like I said, in the coming videos, we will explore first and second order splines more and talk about the theory and give some examples. I hope that this video helped you gain a fundamental understanding of what spline interpolation is, how it differs from our previous interpolation methods, and why we use it. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our YouTube memberships by clicking that join button down below. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.